Hi there, and welcome to Divergent Minds. I'm your host, Lydia. I talk about all things adult autism as I am an adult with autism. There are some th interesting things that I have learned about myself and my friends that I want to share with all of you. From learning differences to sensory structures to love stories, I am here to tell you all about it. I hope today you will learn something new and will use this knowledge to help someone through their neurodivergent struggles. On this episode, I'll be talking about overstimulation in adults with autism. You know that feeling where the lights are bright, noises are loud, any touch seems like a punch and you feel the deep inner feeling of dread? Well, maybe you don't, but that's what it's like to feel overstimulated, at least in my world. Overstimulation can occur with anyone of any age, regardless of neurodivergent status, and its repercussions can affect one totally, totally differently than another. But there's one thing that everyone's overstimulation has in common, impairment. When I and others I know get overstimulated, we are completely incapacitated. We have a disconnect from the outside world as our bodies retreat into ourselves. Imagine standing in a line at the grocery store or walking into a noisy bar or restaurant and suddenly the lights go bright, noises get even louder and you become so disoriented you can't even stand upright. Side note, this was, this was an actual experience that I had walking into a bar one time. Not only is this socially embarrassing, but it can be dangerous as well. What happens when you're crossing the street and a loud ambulance drives by? Let's talk more about this in detail. Most everyone will experience overstimulation to some degree in their lifetime, but one population most associated with it is individuals with autism. Overstimulation, or sensory overload, is most commonly associated with kids with autism, though, and not adults. Society seems to have a preconceived notion that adults simply grow out of their tendencies toward over sensory overload. It is true that by the time a child with autism becomes an adult, they are armed with many more coping mechanisms than were available to them as children. However, sensory overload persists throughout the lifetime. I've been working in the field of autism care for children and adults for a few years now. I have done lots of research and taken a number of exams to prepare me for the challenges that come with caring for someone with autism. I have had several personal experiences with autism becoming overstimulated, many of which were very scary. There was one time I was in Disneyland with one of my friends who's notorious for becoming overstimulated, her words. We were on Main Street, USA, the most crowded area of the park. The fireworks had just finished. When the noise of the fireworks freshened her mind and the massive crowds trying to exit, it was no wonder that my friend fell prey to sensory overload. She vanished into the crowd as she ran. At the time, I knew her phone was dead and I could not find her anywhere. I started to panic. Finally, I found her in an alley that had, a few, that had very few lights, sounds, or people. She was lying on the ground, covering her ears. I was able to de-escalate de the situation as I had been trained, speaking in soft tones, keeping it, uh, others at a safe distance, and being aware not to add any more outside stimulus in the form of touch. After a while, she was able to de-escalate and we were able to safely exit the park. Interacting with an adult with autism, especially when they become overstimulated, can be a challenge. According to a study published by Marcia Stromberg, it can be very difficult to administer adequate health care to an adult with autism who is in crisis due to their communication differences. In her study, 62 Swedish adults with autism and 36 without were placed in healthcare settings and asked to answer a series of questions regarding their experience. Those, auto those with autism expressed feelings of greater discomfort in a medical setting because of all the background noises and bright lights. So, in our scenario of an adult with autism becoming overstimulated in public, let's say someone dialed 911. The paramedics arrive to try to escort the individual into an ambulance with a loud siren and take them to the hospital. When they get to the hospital, they are placed on a gurney, placed in a brightly lit room with lots of persistent background noises. When you're overstimulated, this process may make matters worse, not better. Especially as there is nothing wrong medically at the moment, it'd be way more helpful for the paramedics to attempt to remove the person away from the crowds into a darker room away from loud noises, talking calmly to them to de-escalate. De now, let's talk about some treatments for overstimulation. Working as a behavior technician for kids, with kids and adults with autism has given me a ton of insight of how to help myself when other and, and others when I get overstimulated, or when they get overstimulated. The first thing to do with a person who has an episode of sensory overload is to, is if, if it is safe to do so, remove the individual from the situation. If it is not possible, let's say a loud ambulance passes by, I don't like ambulances, I encourage the individual I'm with, and, and I myself do this too, to play hold on to your ears, to simultaneously direct, distract them from what's going on, to give them an added layer of protection against the outside sound. Even when I'm by myself, then a loud sound passes by or alarm goes off and I'm unable to stop, 
I sit down, cover my ears, and close my eyes until it passes. My friend in Disneyland was able to find a quiet corner away from the stimulation. This was possibly the best thing that could have happened, although it was challenging that she eloped. In the event of overstimulation at home or indoors, turning off the lights and shutting off sounds are two great ways to hope, like, to cope with sensory overload. The first step of treatment is assessment. It can be very difficult for someone who does not overstimulate on a regular basis to understand what it's like and how it varies from person to person. Even when you have explained overstimulation, it is difficult to gauge how your experience compares to another. Elwin Schroeder Ekin Kelden developed a detailed questionnaire to help determine the severity and triggers of sensory re reactivity in adults with high-functioning autism. This tool was, de was developed to aid in the process of diagnosing adults, with and with autism it has been beneficial to this process. There's been much debate about the differences between overstimulation in children and adults with autism. It is, over, is overstimulation more powerful in children than adults? Mayer, in her article, concludes that there is evidence that children with uh, adults with autism have a higher tolerance for stimuli than children. I suppose this makes sense. Like with attention deficits, adults tend to develop coping strategies as they age, whether that is through self-determination, therapy, or just life experiences. From, from my experience, though, I know the feeling of overstimulation have not waned since I was a child, but I've, de but I've definitely developed many methods of dealing with it. In their article, Cooper, in their article, Cooper, Verhoeven, and Gertz suggest that auditory sensation over perception may be related uh, to social difficulties in individuals with autism. Let's say that a young woman is, with autism is trying to participate in some co-worker's conversation. She has trouble understanding the implication of what is being said rather than just the words that are being said. Because of this frustration, the woman is more likely to be sens sensitive to auditory some stimuli immediately or even hours after. One way to keep this overstimulation from occurring, one technique that I have found useful f uh, for me, is to ask a close friend to decipher what is actually said while I tell him the words that were said. With this knowledge, I can make more rules in my mind and help create a mental map for social constructs such as these. This is a de-escalation technique that I have found particularly useful in my life. One great difference between adults and children with autism is that while children are supported by the guardians, many adults with autism work jobs. According to the Autism Society, over 67% of adults with autism are unemployed due to their disability. This may be because of a conservatorship where the adult is still taken care of by their appointed caretakers, but it may also be because of a work, experience, work environment that is hostile to someone with sensory sensitivity. In, in his article, DeVries explores some alternatives and accommodations that must be made to help those with hypersensitivity. Some of these accommodations are installing carpet flooring, which absorbs more, which absorbs sound more easily than laminate flooring. Another would be to have a background fragrance to keep the stimulation of coworkers' perfumes at a minimum. And one last one he suggests is to paint walls in neutral colors rather than bright colors and murals to decrease visual stimulus. To conclude, overstimulation can be a rough experience. Experts have made valiant efforts to understand the process from an outsider's perspective, but I can tell you it is very helpful to have someone of an insider's perspective. As studies have shown, though, not everyone's sensory overload experience is the same. Some are worse than others, and some experience overload in only one of their senses, like vision or audition. In my professional experience working with, directly with individuals who experience overstimulations has helped me understand just how very different people's overstimulation experiences can be. There is a ton of new research coming out even in the last 10 years on autism spectrum disorder, and thus there has been much more support and understanding for, of the challenges that come with it. The more we know, the better, and every day we learn something new. Well, that's all I have for you today. Thank you for listening to this bit on overstimulation at Divergent Minds. I hope you've learned something new today and can better help your friends or yourself during the experience of overstimulation. Bye for now!